Good morning. I'm Melissa Harris Perry. Last month, we were cheering President Obama for his defiance in the face of the Republicans' shutdown and their threat to breach the debt ceiling. The Republicans wanted to gut the Affordable Care Act. The president was having none of it. As long as I am president, I will not give in to reckless demands by some in the Republican Party to deny affordable health insurance to millions of hardworking Americans. I will not negotiate over Congress's responsibility to pay bills it's already racked up. Nobody gets to hurt our economy and millions of hardworking families over a law you don't like. He dug in his heels for weeks. He refused to budge on the ACA. Instead, he demanded the Republicans vote to reopen the government and raise the debt ceiling. And it worked. On October 16th, Congress struck a deal to do both. Good job, Mr. President. Who says Democrats always cave? Well, this week, that guy, the defiance guy, he was nowhere to be found. Republicans have been howling for the ACA's head. I, I know what else is new. But this time, it was for the realization that more than 4 million people were getting cancellation notices, notices saying that their individual health policies would not be available next year because of the Affordable Care Act's strict new rules for such policies. Republicans accused the president of lying by telling the American people that if you like your plan, you can keep it. So President Obama did not dig in his heels this time. Instead, he made a mea culpa on Thursday, saying he messed up on the ACA. The website rollout was botched, he said. He was wrong about keeping the plans you like. I'm just going to keep on working as hard as I can around the priorities that the American people care about. Uh, and I think it's legitimate for them to expect me to have to win back uh, some credibility on this health care law in particular and uh, on a whole range of these issues in general. Um, and, you know, that, that's on me. I mean, uh, we fumbled the rollout on this health care law. The president announced that he would allow insurance companies to continue offering pre-ACA plans for another year, plans that don't meet the health care law's strict rules for individual insurance policies. Plans that offer such limited coverage that if you actually get sick, it might feel a lot like you don't have health insurance at all. The president caved. Not a lot, but just enough. The ACA is still nearly intact, and the insurance rules will still go into full effect next year. But it does make you wonder, why take that stand in October at all? Why let the government shut down for the first time in 17 years to protect the health care law? Why do that? if you were just going to give in anyway. Well, so maybe it's about the president protecting his party in advance of the midterm elections. I mean, apparently now it is really important to get blue dog Louisiana Senator Mary Landrieu reelected. And the White House was probably hoping that the president's self-flagellation and delay would give Landrieu cover to back away from the bill she proposed that would let people keep their plans. But Landrieu had already attracted some Democratic support from conservative Democratic senators like Kay Hagan of North Carolina and Mark Pryor of Arkansas, who are also facing their own tough reelection battles in the South next year. It doesn't look like she's ready to back down. So, all right, listen, Nerland. Can I speak frankly? Let's just pretend that, that we're sitting together in the living room and that I'm not talking to you from a studio in New York. Because right now, how I am feeling is probably not appropriate for TV broadcast. I am pissed. Look, our country has been trying to achieve meaningful reform that provides broad health care coverage for our citizens for more than 100 years in fits and starts from Teddy Roosevelt to Bill Clinton. Now, we've had incomplete but deeply important successes with Medicaid and Medicare, even COBRA policies. But it was not until President Obama and Speaker Pelosi finally made this decades-long struggle a top agenda item that we finally, at least in some measure, began to move toward a meaningful, contemporary expansion of health care coverage for all Americans. And Republicans fought it every step of the way. Members of the Republican Party purposely misrepresented the bill when it was a proposal. Once it became law, they aggressively lied about its provisions and what they would mean for American families and businesses. They resisted their legal responsibility as elected officials to enforce the law, taking it all the way to the Supreme Court. And they have used Confederate era tactics of attempted nullification to kill the law upon implementation. And now, well now, Democrats are joining in howling about the horrors of Obamacare and its faulty website. 
And yesterday, the U.S. House of Representatives approved a bill proposed by Congressman Fred Upton that would allow insurers to keep selling their subpar plans, not only to people who had them before, but to new customers as well. <laughs> Which really just means that insurance companies can keep making massive profits from vulnerable people in the individual market without providing them meaningful protection. So I'm thinking, maybe the resistance is just winning. Maybe we're going to fail again to extend health care to the American people. And not only that, but maybe the Americans who actually most need the coverage are going to cheer even as they defeat the very policy that could have helped them. And in the kind of ugly place in my gut, I think, well, good luck with that. Because sometimes you just get the democracy that you deserve. Anybody in their land want to talk me down? Joining me now is Anthea Butler, professor at the University of Pennsylvania, and also John Braybender, Republican strategist and former aide to Rick Santorum. Thanks for sitting through my rant. Let me. <laughs> oh, it was interesting. I like seeing passion. So. <laughs> so, John, let me let me let me ask you this. I think there's no doubt Republicans scored a big political win here in terms of having the president to back down on this question of full implementation um, immediately, right? By basically allowing people an extra year with those plans. But is it a win for the American people? It's clearly a win for Republicans. Is it a win for the American people? Well, first of all, if the president did anything, he did something unusual. He got the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, and Washington Post all agree in editorials yesterday that what President Obama did by extending this for a year was wrong. Uh, the bigger problem that I see is I think he's lost a lot of credibility. He criticized Republicans for saying, can't we just delay this? Absolutely not. It's the wrong thing to do. Well, look, now, for political reasons, he delayed the obligation of businesses under the act to uh, be requirement for a year to cover people or be penalized. He now has, for another year, extended the right of insurance companies to cancel people. Plus, there is no obligation to go back to people who have already been notified. Yep to say that they're covered. Yep. So all the things he said he wasn't going to do and all the warnings that were sort of given out there, I feel like he's ignored. So I do agree he's lost credibility. And I frankly do believe he looks very political in this, which is problematic for the Democrats. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's political, certainly in the sense that this president never has to run for an election again. He's not standing for re-election. I, I want to listen to what the president said on Thursday, where he's clearly trying to provide some cover for his party, for congressional Democrats and senators, um, as they face tough re-election bids. I want them to know that, you know, their senator or congressman, uh, they were making representations based on what I told them and what uh, this White House and our uh, you know, administrative staff told them. And so it's not on them, it's on us. So this is, you know, vintage Obama. He's, you know, President Obama, he's taking responsibility. I've always appreciated and respected that about him. On the other hand, I keep thinking, but no, no, no. They're, these people are not trying to fix Obamacare. They are trying to kill it. Hold the line. Exactly. And I keep thinking, why are you so naive to not realize what is really happening around you? Everybody wants you to fail on the other side. And so now you've capitulated to the failure. What are you going to do? You said that this is wrong. So let me give you an example about what this means for a regular person. My driver this morning who drove me from Philadelphia here, his wife has a health plan. She's trying to figure out what to do. She's already got the cancellation notice. She doesn't know what to do. And now she thinks on Obamacare her insurance premiums are going to be higher. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is we're playing these political games, but real, real people, people. Are, are trying to figure this thing out. And you can't figure this out in a month and a half. And if you've gotten those letters already, what is going to happen? And insurers are having to figure out what's happening now because of what, did, what happened on Thursday. So now this whole thing is in a complete disarray, and this when, is the when problem. It, when, it, when it need not be. I mean, exactly. I, I guess, you know, f for me, and I said this last night with Reverend Sharpton, it is, it's the spoiled milk analogy, right? Yeah. We have a responsibility that we don't allow people to sell spoiled milk. Even though we have people in this country who are hungry, you can't go buy spoiled milk yeah. at the store because the government sets a set of regulations about, <laughs> about what our food safety is. And similarly, I think, no, we just, we cannot sell these plans. Um, we are going to move on from this time topic, mostly because if we stay on it, my head will explode. Um, and that we, makes great TV. Yes, it does. It does yeah, make it great. Does, it does right. make great TV. But we're going to add a couple of folks to the table.